In this video, I turn to the intrinsic credibility of the competing historicity and mythicism theories. The historicity theory holds that Jesus was a man who was crucified around 30 AD, became an adopted son of God by around 70 AD, and became God by the time of Pliny's letter in 112 AD, despite the fact that his life ended in an ignominious death. The problem with this theory is not in explaining his historical existence, but rather in explaining how an apparently obscure person who ran up against an unpopular empire but unsuccessfully ended up becoming God. The pivotal step in this process seems to have been the origin and spread of the belief that Jesus was resurrected. But how did this belief arise? As under minimal historicity a historical Jesus cannot have been resurrected, how did the belief take hold after his death? Some people may have had hallucinations, but surely would have been dismissed as cranks. Mass hallucinations, maybe? Possible, but it sounds like a pretty improbable invention to get round a problem in the theory. Plenty of religious figures have died. Why was only Jesus hallucinated back to life? Furthermore, the time frame for this belief to gain traction and become accepted is relatively short. As under historicity, it was the central message of Christianity. It must have been widespread at the time when Saul of Tarsus was persecuting Christians before his Damascus Road conversion and change of name to Paul. This event is dated in the 30s, possibly 33 AD. So this belief must have taken hold to the extent that Saul was persecuting people for it prior to that date. If so, it must have started very shortly after Jesus' death. And this runs into another problem. When the Romans crucified people, they generally left the bodies on the crosses to decompose and be eaten by wild animals in order to maximise the deterrent effect of the punishment. If this is what happened to Jesus, then there would have been an unusually obvious and protracted demonstration that he was dead. Mythicists were not the first and are not the most vocal to highlight this problem with minimal historicity. The same weakness is exploited by triumphal historicists to assert that Jesus cannot just have been a man and so must also have been God. So the Christ myth theory holds that Jesus was originally seen as a god who was crucified and raised from the dead in the spirit realm at no particular date, and possibly at the beginning of time. The theory therefore does not need to explain how an obscure man became god. It does, however, need to explain how historicization started, gained traction and became accepted. The time frame for this is rather longer than is allowed for the comparable problem in the historicist theory, but not as long as is often claimed. I find it improbable that historicity was invented by Mark with no prior sources. For me, it is more likely that if historicization did happen, it was prompted by Paul's habit of drawing ambiguous earthly metaphors for spiritual concepts and gained traction and acceptance with the associated literary and oral traditions by around 70 AD when Mark was written, a period of 10 or 20 years, of which Paul was still alive for the first 10 or so years. The story could have evolved by reallocation of sayings and deeds of others, convergence of multiple characters into one person, and invention, all in oral tradition. An advantage this scheme has over the historicist scheme is that there is no need to rely on unusual pivotal occurrences like mass hallucinations. We have good reason to believe that both mythicists and historicists were around in the first two centuries AD. 2 John chapter 1 verse 7 I say this because many deceivers who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh have gone out into the world. Any such person is the deceiver and the antichrist. That may be only a fleeting reference, but it is still quite consistent with the myth theory that holds that most traces of the true origins of Christianity were censored during the period of historicist hegemony. Both theories involve rather convoluted speculation about how something that was not true came to be seen as true. Therefore, both theories can easily be doubted, but I see little merit in delving into the relative merits of the different speculative schemes about how falsehood came to be accepted by Christians. But one thing is certain. Either historicity in one form or another, or mythicism in one form or another, have to be true. They can't both be false, and they can't both be true. So far, though, I have been unable to choose between them with any confidence, even on a balance of probability basis. What I am, however, inclined to oppose are the extreme positions taken by both sides. The historicists who discount out of hand the possibility of the Christ myth theory, saying no serious scholars believe it and there is simply no scholarly debate about it. Mythicists, on the other hand, are a little more circumspect, partly because they are in a small minority among scholars, but that hasn't stopped some of them making unjustified claims, such as one prominent mythicist's calculation that the odds against Jesus ever existing are somewhere between 3 to 1 and 12,500 to 1, a conclusion, incidentally, that is based on an elementary mathematical mistake made in an otherwise reasonable book. 
So I'm sorry to disappoint, but I'm unable to reach a conclusion on whether or not Jesus really existed. But I hope you found these videos helpful in reaching your own conclusion. Furthermore, I haven't covered every argument, and if there's one you find particularly compelling, then I would be keen to hear of it and examine it in further videos. Thank you for listening. Please subscribe, and I will note your comments with interest.